Hello and welcome to another quick run through of some uh, more of the advanced features that are available with the ArcSight ESM real-time correlation platform. And today I'm actually going to focus a little bit more on what we can do with assets. Now assets are incredibly powerful and I'll cover that in a, a separate video where I'll run through some of the, com the functionality that we have available with us uh, on that, specifically networks, assets, zones, and so on. Uh, but what I will do is there's a little known feature, and, and it's actually an incredibly powerful aspect, that we can update assets, and we can do so in a rule-based manner. So uh, I actually have a, a little bit of a basic setup uh, just configured to do that. So we've got an asset here. This is my demonstration system where we can see these, these fictitious company called ArcNet, and I've got an asset here called desktop one what we have here is some assets that they've got this uh, the what we have here are some categories that are being assigned to this particular asset now in this case it's only got one it's uh, it's one to do with being referred to as a, a desktop here but we can see the attributes assigned to it so we can see there's a host name there's maybe an IP address and there could be a MAC address the, the little stars indicate that's the minimum set of details that we need uh, for this uh, this particular uh, setup is set that uh, it uses the IP address and the name uh, of course if it's a variable IP address you'd have the MAC address and you you define it according you change the static addressing on that one you just untick that but we've got an asset and we've got some categories assigned to it what we can do is we can actually have some simple rules now what are we doing so I have uh, two rules here um, one to indicate the scanned host update and one to indicate the scanned host is out of date so for let's let's do the first one let's do scanned host update we look at the rule, very simple rule. I'm looking for a specific log message. That's okay. Uh, it, this is a demonstration to prove this. As the action, we can see that the action that we're triggering here is add asset category to asset. That means there's an option here. In fact, I can, I can show you. Uh, it actually appears under asset here. We add asset, remove asset. What we're doing here is we're adding a category. We're adding a specific category. And in this one, we're actually adding a category of scanned to this particular host. So if I just uh, actually just play the specific message through uh, into the system, we'll see what actually happens. So there we go. Uh, we can actually see the messages have come through. Uh, we can see that there is the uh, scanned system complete. That's the message. It refers to that particular asset name. Uh, and we can see that the, uh, the rule has been triggered, scanned host update. That's exactly what we want it to do. So let me just close that and go back to my asset just briefly. Uh, look at my asset there. Look at the categories. And it's now got that particular added asset category so we can we can tag it with information we can do so dynamically based on the log data that we're receiving but we can actually do this both ways so what I can do is I can remove asset categories as well so let me just replay the message that's going to do that for this So there we go. We now get the corresponding message. So we've got the message saying the scan is now out of date and we've updated the asset accordingly. So if I go back to my asset, just double click on it, go to my categories and the asset category has been removed. So this is a very simple use case scenario. I'm just illustrating that what we can do is we can add asset information. We can remove asset information. In this case, it's a, it could be for a scan to indicate that it's out of date. But of course, assets can be used in reports, in dashboards, and more importantly, within the rules themselves. So we can check that they're from a particular device or asset is, is included in a particular group, has a particular property. For example, it could be for compliance or it could be for some other aspects to do with uh, relevance around the context whether it's been scanned or not for example so we can start to build up a much more accurate set of information around what the asset is and we can do that dynamically of course what we can do is we can actually illustrate some of the aspects of what we can have with a with an asset as well so here i'm just showing a graph view showing that this desktop one asset uh, is a member of this particular set of attributes like asset categories and so on so it's a member of a group it's got various uh, conditions as well but of course that's just a very simple asset it could be a lot more sophisticated asset so let me just graph this particular view we can attach much more data to it so in this case we've actually attached a bunch load of vulnerabilities and other attributes now we can dynamically add and remove those uh, that bit of information that can then affect how other correlation rules are, are triggered as well why use assets why not use lists 
good question. In that scenario, an asset is a static piece of data. We've got that information, we've attached the, uh, the category to it, and we can attach it to that system as well, rather than having a list where we have to have, say, multiple lists, where we're attaching it to a particular reference information, like an IP address and so on. So there's advantages both ways, but typically if you want to describe the actual asset, you would update the asset categories. And all that rule will do is just to add and remove that asset category. It's as simple as that. It's an incredibly powerful feature and allows us to build out much more sophisticated use case to solve in a real-time monitoring environment. So that's a very quick demonstration. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time.